Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Prepare to receive today's word with a recap from the prophet's recent messages. This was a tradition-busting, system-breaking moment. Never before had sins been dealt with like this in the whole system of the Judeo-Christian ethic. John came preaching a baptism of repentance and telling people, come and be baptized in this water and God will forgive your sins. And the scribes and the Pharisees are over here looking, saying, what? You're, they don't have to come to the temple. They don't have to bring a lamb. They don't have to bring a goat. They don't have to bring a turtle dove. They don't have to wait for Yom Kippur. Our whole religious system is about to break down. Our whole financial system of selling, sac <coughs> of selling sacrifices at the temple so that people can make the appropriate sacrifice is about, the, our economy is about to be broken. That's why before Jesus goes to the cross, he goes into the temple and turns over the tables of the money changers. Because he said, you heard what John preached, and you saw what I preached, and what I did, and you are still selling this stuff to people who don't need it. You are trying to keep an old era alive when I have shifted it. And now I'm about to overturn your church. I'm about to overturn your table. Now one of the things we have said over the last several weeks is that the new bowl is a type of the new covenant. And the first issue, if you will, of the Elisha era, the first event in Elisha's prophetic ministry in his era has to do with this new bowl and putting salt in the new bowl. We said the new bowl is a type of the new covenant. The salt is you and I. Uh, Matthew 5, 13, Jesus says, ye are the salt of the earth. So the, so the key to changing the condition of what was going on was to get salt in the new bowl and then the salt from the new bowl would change the situation. So there must be a people now that come all the way into the new covenant in their identification and their emulation and begin to manifest new covenant life instead of old covenant death to the people who are in need of transformation. We showed you last week that the Apostle Paul, not the prophet Clarence, called the old covenant the ministry of death in 2 Corinthians. And I went over that. I will not go back over it now because I don't have time. But if you need clarity to understand why he called it the ministry of death, it's in uh, last week or the week before's Message. I can't go there today. I don't have uh, that much time. But here's what I do want you to see. I want you to see that the first issue, uh, please hear me, the first issue of the Elisha era 
is to address the condition of the harvest. No, no, yeah. You, 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 did you hear what I just said? The first, the, the, the first issue of the Elisha era and that anointing is to address the condition of the harvest. Because look at what the men say. They say the city is pleasant, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. So barren ground is not producing fruit. It, 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 the, it, the harvest is being affected by the condition of the ground. And the condition of the ground has hardened because the water coming out of the city is bad. Are you still here? So the harvest is being affected by the water that is coming out of the city. You didn't hear what I just said. The harvest is affected by the bad water that is coming out of the city. So Elisha says, if we're going to change this thing, first of all, we got to get a new bowl. And then we got to put salt in that new bowl instead of trying to get salt in the old bowl and pour it out. Are you still here? And then we got to put it at the source of where the thing has gone bad. And the Spirit of the Lord said, I need you to address this, son, because we have to correct the mentality and the mindset of the sheep. God says, take your mouth off my woman. Take your mouth off my woman. The church is my bride. Take your mouth off of my wife. Are you here? Oh, see, I'm trying, I'm trying to teach, but this stuff is coming up out of my spirit. That's why no attempt, no attempt, no attempt to shut down the church of the living God will ever succeed. Not until Jesus comes again will the church be shut down. Let me tell you, Mr. President. Let me tell you, Mr. Governor. Let me tell you, Mr. Mayor. I don't care what pandemic come. You will not shut down the church of the living God. Let me tell you why. God is going to protect his woman. You wouldn't let nobody dog your wife, neither will Jehovah. Mr. Mayor, you wouldn't let anybody shut your wife out, neither will Jehovah. So before you think about it again, let me tell you, it'll fail. I'm begging you by the mercies of God that when you present yourself to God, you stop presenting yourself as a worm, as a wretch, as an ex-homosexual, as an ex-murderer, as an ex-this. I'm begging you and pleading with you because I know what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. That when you present yourself to God, and see that word there, your bodies, but it literally means your whole being. That you present yourself holy. That you present yourself acceptable. What is he saying? God is saying you're holy. God is saying you're without blemish. God is saying you're spotless. And if you'll start saying, I'm spotless, I'm holy, I'm without blemish. If you'll start making that presentation, when you and God agree, the power of God will begin to go into effect and manifest what you're saying you are. Because you'll have what? That's how the new creation changes. Not by effort. By revelation and declaration. Not by trying. By revelation and declaration. Not by trying to stop some behavior. By revelation and declaration.
God is presenting me. Jesus is presenting me to himself healed. That's the only way he sees me. Jesus is presenting me to himself as wealthy, rich. That's what he's saying about me. And see, you get mad at me for saying it when all I'm doing is saying what my father said about me. I'm just saying what my father said. And what too many people in the old bowl haven't realized is we got the same daddy. You could start talking like this and start seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> Come on, hit your neighbor and say, who's your daddy? Who's, who's your daddy? The Academy of Healing and Wellness Convention returns with fresh revelation about the grace and power of Jesus Christ, an essential resource for every believer, especially in these challenging times. In these extensive sessions, Bishop McClendon teaches how the Word of God is the new creation's medication. How the power to heal is always present using God's kingdom principles. And how God doesn't punish us with sickness because we did something wrong. The ministry of Jesus is a teaching, preaching, healing ministry. He heals all kinds of disease. And he heals everything. Which means no matter what kind they come up with, he heals it. If you desire to walk in divine health, Make the Academy of Healing and Wellness your center for disease control and turn on the flow of God's healing power today. Now available on the Bishop of Pendant Digital Download Store. If we are going to be the prophetic community, if we're going to live by this word, then we've got to understand we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against powers and against principalities. This collection of powerful teachings from Bishop McClendon reveals from the word of God how believers should properly respond to social injustice. Every time God tries to bring a revival to this nation, we turn it into a political movement or an ethnic movement instead of allowing the Spirit of God to expose the injustice and falling on our knees and crying out to God to help us. Order a Righteous Riot CD collection today. The severity of the times has unleashed a plethora of perplexities worldwide, including the hotly debated issue of racial equality. But in order to deconstruct racism, we must first acknowledge that its ideology is based on a historic lie and not biblical truth. Race is not in the mind of God. Race is not distinguished in the Bible. Race is not remotely a Christian concept. So my question is, why does the church 
continue to engage in the divisive narrative of race. In this unapologetic and confrontational series, Bishop McClendon lays an axe to the root of hatred and bigotry, using biblical evidence to prove God divided men first on the basis of their language and ultimately on the basis of their covenant relationship with him and not their skin color. Order this resource today when you visit our website or call 310-323-2600. Praise the Lord. Praise our mighty King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It may be a little overcast this morning, you know, and sometimes you feel a little, but it is a new day, a, 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 the right time to give praise. Amen. And you know, they say overcast. Like when, when I said that, I'm like, yeah, but he's, he's over us. You know, like I, that's what I kind of like, I don't know if I could articulate it in words, but as soon as I said it, I just felt like, yeah, but his presence is like hovering over us, like the glory yes. cloud, you know, like, you, you know what I mean? He's the God who calls things that be not as 
they are and then they were that becomes, yeah. right? So you gotta you gotta speak what is this glory cloud over us right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for your glory cloud. Yes. Lord. I, I didn't that that just you know just came. Thank you, Lord. Give God Amen. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on that note, we share uh, share this. You know, I was I was just looking at glory a little bit more, you know, and I'm still studying on, still studying a little more on glory, but you know, something that I, in my worship or study meditation time, I was seeing when God defines glory to Moses, right? And he's like, you'll see the and all those things come and pass by you. And God's glory is his good experience, his glory. When you see his goodness, you experience his glory. When you encounter healing, experience his glory, right? You're experiencing his presence. And then when we say, I give you glory, we are saying, I give you honor and adoration, right? Like you can have a word that means to, you know, has two different definitions depending on how you're using it. But realize or, or something, I don't know if I can fully articulate it just yet, but it's like you're saying, I give you glory, yeah. right? And, and you're giving him adoration for his glory. And that adoration is due his glory. Does that make sense? giving you glory back to glory. Glory begets glory, right? When you give him glory, his glory cloud shows up. It's like glory begets glory. And I thought that was just something so wonderful. And I just was like, thank you, God. And this morning, even in this moment, I, I say thank you for your glory cloud. Amen. And as we give him glory, may, we, may his, his glory just manifest even more so in our lives. Hallelujah. And, and in that, let me just share, a, a, it's just, this is flowing. It's just flowing. So the, I don't know. A story where there was this, a little boy, uh, maybe it was about six, seven, you know, between the ages of six and eight, I believe, and originally he was kidnapped. And when he was when he was kidnapped, um, someone lured him with candy, you know, teach your kids, don't just take candy from strangers. But he was in that back seat, and he began to sing, every praise is to our God, every word of worship on a chord, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Yeah. Right? And then he said, God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. And that little boy just kept singing that song over and over and worshiping God because he had seen his family or his parents or he'd seen them do it and he just worshiped and he just worshiped and he just worshiped. And the kidnappers are like, you know, tell them like, you know, be quiet, but in more, you know. <laughs> and he just kept singing, God, my savior. That man kicked him out the car. <laughs> and then he went to, there was a house nearby or somewhere and he said, you know, I have a kidnapped you. They were to call his parents and they came and got him it was his deliverer the lord was yeah. his savior i said hallelujah praise god hallelujah. so when i say glory that's glory when you give him glory his glory rose up that child gave him glory he called out the nature the glory of god said god my savior my healer my deliverer hallelujah his glory cloud is over us this morning. Let's just give him glory and let his glory fill our temple. Let his glory fill our walking temples here. Hallelujah. Praise my King Jesus, our Savior, healer, our deliverer. By your blood, we have the victory. Woo! That blood that was shed. Hallelujah. Pay the eternal price. You know, when you a person gets into maybe a car accident, I don't want to say you, you know, and you know, if you if you tell the person who hit you, don't worry about it, you still have to pay for the the damage to your vehicle. You know, there's a price that you have to pay. But the, it, he, Jesus said. The Lord said, I'm going to pay price for sin, for eternity. Even if you mess up today, tomorrow, the price has already been paid. There's, there's no cost. So in response, it, it, it is only, it, 
it is it is due just to just to worship and to say thank you father and get glory that begets glory i mean i don't that's a really good contract i think you know you you just praise him and he shows up you just worship and he shows up there's nothing that we've done nothing he has it's already there you just all we got to do is worship acknowledge that he is our sovereign god he is our savior hallelujah wow oh, what a wonderful god what a loving god yes lord lord we come to worship you Woo! i need a moment the story of the young boy that I just shared. us but we have an understanding and you know bit by bit we have more and more understanding and that's major right I mean it's beyond what we can really fathom what he's done for us but even if we can't fathom that we can fathom the saving of a little boy we can fathom the healing of your mother your father the healing of your body you can fathom those things that you can give him praise and you can honor him in your way you know, even if it's just a thank you, even if it's just wave, the way that you give, when it comes from the heart, there is a frequency, it, it gives sound. It, it is worship. He can hear that frequency. That frequency can sometimes be louder than the person shouting because the way from the heart, it is worshiping in spirit and truth. Worship him in your own way this morning. Worship him in your own way this morning. Acknowledge his goodness. Acknowledge his glory. Give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo. I was reading, I started reading a book that says, uh, is it uh, uh, your worship versus strange fire? Wait, wait, I started reading your book. And a line there that said, is it a enough is it enough to just show up and, and and I thought to myself you know for some person God knows their heart it might be enough to just show up because you don't know what they've gone through to do, right but you know is it enough to just show up yeah. we're in the house of the Lord we've got to give him praise we got to give him something that we know he deserves that he's worthy of hallelujah Yes, and I know that we've come to worship. I know that we've come to praise him. And for those who are watching via the stream, we know that you're tuned. You want to be tuned into the glory frequency to praise him. Welcome to the place of grace where whomever can and will be healed of whatever. As you give him glory, glory comes down. And that is his goodness. That is his healing begins to over in the name of Jesus hallelujah be not distracted be not dismayed be not cumbersome with worry or anxiety throw it off aside and give him praise and watch solution come down watch things be made plain watch the crooked path be made straight in the name of Jesus in the name of mighty King Jesus the name that is above every name. The name that when you call, the word of God says that every knee should bow. And you know, I was looking at that, every knee should. For me, sometimes when I would see the word should, it, it sounds like it, it, it should, um, like it should happen. Like it should, but in some cases it doesn't. 
But no, 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 no. It's more like a decree from a king. And when they say, when the decree says, when, when the name of Jesus is called upon, every knee should, like you're saying it should, like that is what you're supposed to do. Like it's, it's a, I don't, I don't catch what the revelation, like when he gave to me, it's like, it's not a should, like this is what should, it's a, these are the instructions, right? So the same way that when God said, let like be, and it was, right? It's in instructions that when he says every knee should bow, he has given a decree that it's going to bow. They have, that's what you're supposed to do in response to that. Just like the law of gravity, the laws of the universe that God created, those things operate according to those laws. It is a law. So when you call on the name Jesus, know the power, the gift, the village that he has given you in that name to call and decree and every knee bows in the name of Jesus. Every mountain plain, every crooked path becomes straight in the name of Jesus understand the nature of the gift of the name Jesus and as we work lift up the name Jesus woo, woo, the possibilities the possibilities are infinite from infinity to infinity he reigns he rules and there is no one like our God and we came this God we tuned in this morning oh God to worship you hallelujah 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 King Jesus we give you the praise this morning I'm gonna read Psalm 34 I'm gonna read in King of the New King James and then I'm gonna read it in the NIV tune in with me connect with me as I see these say these words I bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my my soul shall make it rest in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I asked the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Up to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. It says, I will extol the Lord at all times his praise will always be in my lips i will glory in the lord let the afflicted hear and rejoice glorify the lord with me let us exalt his name together i sought the lord and answered me he delivered me from all my fears those who look to him are radiant look to the lord and be radiant this morning hallelujah their faces are never, never covered in shame. Never covered in shame. Hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Lord, we come to worship you. We love you. We adore you. We honor you, God, this morning. Hallelujah. 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 A few more verses. Night, Psalm 98. It says, I'm going to jump down to, to uh, verse 4. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp. Our harps are right here. Can we praise God for our harps? Can we praise for our harps? Can we praise God for our harps? With the harp and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn, uh, and the sound of a horn, will be your trumpet this morning. Hallelujah! Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Let me roar and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, as let the rivers clap their hands. If rivers can clap their hands, what are we doing? What are we doing? If rivers can clap their hands. What are we giving to our this morning? Hallelujah. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the people with equity. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands? Can we join and clap our hands for the Lord? Can we shout to the king? Is the shout of the king among us this morning?
Come on, let the people of God praise him. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. He was worthy this morning. He was worthy last night. He was worthy last week. He'll be worthy tomorrow. Worthy next week. He'll be worthy here. Come on, let the people praise him. Now, praise is not something you can do silently. Praise is something you have to do demonstratively. So either you have to open up your mouth or you have to use your hands or use your feet or do something. Come on, let the people of God praise him. You're not praising me. You're not praising us. We're praising the King of Kings and the Lord, our creator, our heavenly father, the one who made us, the one who made everything that is seen and unseen. That is magnifying. That is super glorifying. Come on, man. Come on, come on, man. Come on, fill this room. Fill this room. Turn the keys up. Fill this room. Let's fill this room. Let's fill this room with praise. Let's fill this room with praise. Let's fill the room with praise. Before we go another further, let's fill this room with praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praises to the King of Kings. Highest praises to the Lord. God, you are worthy. God, you are worthy. God, you are worthy. God, you are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, Lord.
Jesus. Can you do one thing? Can you greet your neighbor to your left, right, in front of you, behind you, and just say, neighbor? Come on, find somebody. Find somebody. You may not even have to go to them. Just lock eyes with somebody. My sister back there, I see nobody's by you, so I'm locking eyes with you. Say, neighbor. Whatever you need from the Lord, whatever you truly need from the Lord, do you believe that it is in this house? Now answer them. Answer them. If you believe, say yes, I believe. If you don't really believe, say, well, I believe. Lord, help my. Hallelujah. Do you really believe that whatever you need is already in this house? Already in this house. It's in your heart. It's in your heart. Imagine your greatest need. Imagine your smallest need. In the eyes of God, they're the same. Somebody's believing God for five dollars. Somebody's believing God for a job. Somebody's believing God for a healing in the eyes of God it's all the same we put limitations and we put quali uh, quantifying quantitations upon the blessings God sees it all the same it's a need it's a need and didn't he promise to supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory Hallelujah. let's just thank God for his supply of all our needs hallelujah
says it's marvelous in our eyes. How many are testing on today? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's marvelous what he's done for us. Yes. All the kindness, grace, him dying on the cross for our sins. It didn't end there. He is always, always doing what is right for us, for us, what is awesome. We call you awesome, Lord. We call you awesome. Yeah. You're an awesome God. Oh, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we've got a reason to give praise. We have a reason. We have a right to give God the glory. And it goes to nobody else. Amen. I said the glory goes to nobody else. Amen.
can sing about it and do it. We give you all. We give you all. All the glory. All the praise. All the honor. We give it all to you, Jesus. You deserve it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say glory. Sweet and 
Somebody open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. You are the light to my heart, my soul. You are the light to my heart. 
You don't have to pay to call the name Jesus. It's back in Nigeria, we say it's F O C, free of charge. Nobody's going to charge you. You can call the name anytime you want to. You can never exhaust the power in the name, you can never exhaust the efficacy in the name. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Ah. Ah. You know, when people get into trouble, the first thing they think about is to call somebody who they know can help them. <laughs> I have Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. I Say, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. Say it again, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. It's one thing to have Jesus, it's another thing for Jesus to have you. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's a mutual relationship. I have Jesus. I Jesus has me. Let's say, say, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. And Jesus, and Jesus has, me. has me. One more time. I have, I have Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus has me. Somebody celebrate Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. 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 I can hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come put those hands together for Jesus. I mean, put those hands together for your Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're forever grateful. We're forever grateful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, forever. Sing it together. Say, I will. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord forever. And I will trust Him at all times. I will. Come on, somebody, help me. Trust Him at all times. One thing is certain: He has delivered me from all, all things. He has delivered me. Delivered all feet. He has set my feet upon a solid rock. He has set my feet upon the ground. Oh yes. Sing, I will not be moved. Hey. I will not be moved. And I'll say of the Lord. And I'll say
your hands in the presence of the Lord how many of you know our God is a very present help in any time of need in any situation in any circumstance no matter what the setting is the climate the atmosphere around you our God is a present a very present help there is no God like our God come on and clap your hands this morning in the presence of the Lord and as you have taken your seats this morning we want to welcome you all who have joined us here live at the tabernacle to the place of grace this is the place everybody say the place see we say that because that's just not a a, a running theme or a, you know a catchy trendy saying but this is the place that God has established where whoever can be healed of whatever the moment you park and get out of the car you're walking towards purpose breakthrough destiny healing deliverance whatever it is that you need from God is on its way to you as you come into these doors so let's clap our hands and thank God for the place of grace and again like the man of God says it's not the building it's not the property it's not the location it's the people of God it's the the children of this vision the sons and daughters that actually make up the place of grace if you haven't been uh, in a worship experience with us when you can doors and you sit next to a believer a, a son or daughter of this vision 
connection something is going to leap off of them and go and it's going to touch your life and it's going to be good it's going to be powerful you're going to sense the presence of god because there is a people who believe that god is able to do it exceeding and abundantly far above all we can ask or thank we want to extend greetings to you on behalf of our bishop and first lady bishop clarence mcclendon the entire place of grace family and community those of you streaming live welcome to the broadcast welcome to the morning worship experience can we clap our hands and thank god for come on we can do better than that let, let their view in live they may be having coffee and eating a donut right now but they're still locked in waiting for the word of the lord so we want to extend greetings to you and say bless you on this Sunday morning and extend hallelujahs and thank you Jesus for what God is doing in your life we want to shout out all of our prophetic e community the PEC our global partnership of believers that have leveled up and partnered up with this anointing and with the man of God and said you know what I'm not just going to be a casual follower or, or, or a part-time hero but I want what God is saying to the man of God and the PEC has done that and we want to encourage anyone and everyone out there if you haven't signed up and enrolled yourself into the prophetic e community what are you waiting on what are you waiting for do it today do it now it's free all we need is your information and you'll immediately receive faith building letters you'll receive prophetic insights prayer prompts from the prophet of god how many of you know that god speaks to our man of god bishop clarence e. mcclinton clear it's clear and distinct it's it distinct it's confirmed he, he he's he's notable he is confirmed as a man of God, as a prophet of God to the nations in this dispensation. So what God is saying to him, he doesn't just hold it in and hoard it in, but he wants to get it to the people of God so the people of God can pray the word of God. How many of you know there's power in praying the word of God, praying the prophetic utterance of God, not just asking God to meet your need and, and, and this, that, and the other, but when you take the word, when we take what God is saying to the prophet and declare it and pray it, that's when things change. That's when circumstances turn around. That's when breakthrough happens and occurrences happen. And that's when we experience wonders without as the prophet has declared. So we want to encourage everyone who's out there. If you haven't signed up, join the PEC today. You will be encouraged. And as you're scrolling through and, and, and watching on all of our social media platforms, we want to make sure that you check out the YouTube page. Bishop McClendon has his own YouTube uh, channel and we want you to watch the, the services, the worship experiences, the conferences, the crusades, all of the ministry content that is on there. It'll continually bless your life. So make sure you watch it. And after you watch, if you watch and, and go to YouTube today, make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you become a subscriber to that YouTube page because we want to just continue to flood uh, 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 the, the, the lanes of social media with trafficking the word of God. We want the word of God trafficked out there. We want it so that it just shows up on somebody's, you know, social media. You know, you've seen stuff just randomly show up on your page. You were like, what, what's that? I don't even follow that. Well, we want that to be the man of God. We want people to see the word and hear the word and see the prophet of God and say, hey, I need to hear that. I need to receive that. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow Bishop McClendon on, uh, on Instagram. Uh, Bishop McClendon on Instagram. Bishop McClendon on Facebook. Bishop McClendon on, uh, he's not on TikTok and he ain't on Snapchat. So sorry, but it is. We'll let you know. If Doc starts snapping, you might have to talk him into that just to send a Holy Ghost snap out there, you know, to to really send a punch in the spirit. But make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms. He is on Twitter. The man of God's on Twitter. So make sure you're following Bishop on Twitter. Again, we want to make sure that this fragrance that is being released from here is touching your life, not just on a Sunday, not just whenever we get here, but during the week, because that's when we really need it. It's not the Sunday. Sunday, it seems like the devil kind of takes Sundays off too from attacking the people of God and he's ready to ambush you on Monday. But if you're staying connected and plugged in, and locked into this prophetic word and to this anointing the enemy can't touch you you will be indistinguishable he won't be able to find you because the word of god is covering you hiding you and lifting you up into places 
that the enemy can't get to. So we make sure you're staying connected. Make sure you're staying plugged in. We want to encourage you just to continue to pray for the man of God. Pray for his family. He's been on the grind with this word. We're hitting the curve. We're already in July. We're almost in August. So we're coming around the bend towards the end of the year. But we want to encourage you. Keep staying locked in. Keep staying plugged in. Keep speaking this word that we are hearing. We are in a season of wonders without warning. Amen. Enjoy the worship experience today. God bless you. Check, check, check. Amen, amen. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. Can we sing this together? You know the words, it's Alpha and Omega. And let's join in and let's worship our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be resting in your seat. You can be standing, whatever your posture is. But let us sing to our King. Amen. You are Alpha. So. Alpha sing. with it.
That's it, worship. Worship.
We lift up holy hands. We lift up holy hands. We lift up holy hands in the presence of our Father, in the presence of our King, in the presence of our Lord and Savior, who is our Redeemer. We lift up holy hands. Holy hands. sound of your worship. He loves the sound of praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. He resides in your praise. <laughs> Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. You have filled us with your power. You live inside of us. You comfort us. You guide us. You lead us. You protect us. Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit. In a very special way. In a very 
is the Holy Spirit. God is here. He's here. The Holy Spirit is here to minister. 
Say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Can we do one song before we lift it? And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. What a joy. As we tarry there, none other has ever, ever known. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells What a joy we share as we tear there. None other has ever, ever known. So I'll cherish. Trust at last I lay down. I will cling to the old work and cross and exchange it someday for. <laughs> Somebody just bless the name of the Lord. Just bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Lift your voice. Lift your hands. The presence of the Lord is here. Open up your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Open up your mouth and give him praise. Lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we worship you, Jesus. God Almighty. Oh, be lifted above our love, the gods. We lay our mouth and
your name be exalted. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be exalted above all other gods. Let your name be glorified above all other gods. Let your name be lifted high. We bless you, Lord, forever. Let your glory cover the earth, Jesus. We lay our crowns. We lay our crowns. We lay our crowns in God, glorious God. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence, it fills this room. This is holy ground. Up, sing, bow down, bow down, and worship me. Worship him, worship me. Oh, worship him. We 
and bow down and worship. Bow down and worship. Worthy 
Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, and worthy is your name, and worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve. If you're in the tabernacle and you do have legs you can stand on, I'm going to ask you to stand on. I know you've been worshiping a minute, but I want you to lift your hands before the Lord because the words are declaring that he deserves the praise. Hallelujah. 
and he deserves the glory and if any dignitary were to come into the room you would rise to your feet a greater than any dignitary is present and so i want you to lift your hands just in worship and in adoration and reverence to the present god for he has promised that he would be in the midst when we gather father we bless you honor you and we magnify you we thank you for your presence acknowledging sir that it is your presence that makes the difference and we thank you for your son my father the lord jesus and his finished work on our behalf we bless you and praise you for the person of the holy ghost who is with us and in us and we vow to give you praise and glory for everything said and done thank you for the integrity of your word for the intelligence of the holy spirit and for your people who are your inheritance in the earth minister to them today lift up the bowed down head strengthen feeble knees encourage hearts bring revelation illumination direction clarity understanding and most significantly my father perfume the saints with the spirit of victory again that they might know that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world in the name of jesus and if you agree with that say it is so now amen and praise and glory to the living jesus for he is worthy of your highest praise god bless you and you and you and you and you all over you may be seated in the presence of the lord and god bless you that are joining with us live streaming wherever you are joining us from we bless you we bless you beyond ourselves bless you by reason of the anointing of god and we thank god for his goodness and that are new every morning i remind you of that every time we come together years ago the revelation came to me that you're that when god says his mercies are new every morning that means even the ones that you didn't use yesterday even the ones you didn't use yesterday uh, they didn't even pass over to today you still got a whole fresh dose of mercies today did you get what i just said and so I want you to lay your hands upon yourself and say God's mercy is inexhaustible. No, 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 no. You didn't say it strongly enough. Tell him it is inexhaustible. New every morning. Great. Who knows it? Oh, Lord. Great is. Say that line, God. saying somebody needs to hear it they are new every morning oh oh great is Somebody needed to hear it. Come on, give the Lord praise. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy. Somebody needs to hear it. They are new. Every morning.
the steadfast love. Tell somebody this, they need to hear it. The steadfast love, tell them. This is one of those songs we sing to one another. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. And then singing and making melody to the Lord. Chewing in. bless you and that came up in my spirit so somebody needed it and it's always good to remember somebody say amen to that once again let me greet all of those of you that are joining us by way of live stream wherever you are joining us from we thank the Lord for you we know that those of you that are part of our prophetic e community literally and I do not exaggerate tens of thousands of people every week connect with this anointing through the various platforms and we are grateful to the Lord for it. And if you're not a part of the PEC, I know it's been said, but the connection is invaluable. And I'm praying for you and sharing with you faith building letters and uh, insights from the word of God consistently. In fact, I just got a whole new set of letters I'm about to release to you that I'm editing right now. So if you're not a part of the PEC, if you've not yet become a part of the prophetic e-community doesn't cost you anything right there at bishopmcclendon.com you can sign up and we will be connected on another level throughout the week can you say praise the lord and uh, i want to thank god for the summer season of prayer that is happening here at the cosmopolitan center uh, dr janet logan who's also an elder in this house is stirring again Pastor Ruth and others, thank the Lord for you. And please continue uh, to follow that prayer calendar as we gather together during this time in Jesus' name. Let me get right to a couple of things real quickly. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to, first of all, the book of Genesis, chapter number four, chapter number 12. Genesis chapter number 12. I want you to turn to you. And uh, I'm going to begin reading at verse number one of Genesis chapter 12. I was praying this past week and just meditating before the Lord. And you know, when you, when you walk with God in his word, uh, it is important that you and I allow the word of God to not only inform our spirits but illuminate our mind and our actions do you understand what I just said and the news that belongs to you and I is the news from this word I tell people all the time the news that comes from the various news outlets that's not your news <laughs> you have to understand that that information uh, and encourage time listen to as much as you need to what's going on and then turn it off and don't let it continue to get in your ears and in your spirit because you have to remember designed to have whatever you hear I'm going to teach this today because I've taught basics of faith many times but it, it 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 needs to be you need to be reminded see you you created and designed by God to have faith to develop faith for whatever you hear the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing comes the word of God 
God. That's what that actually means. It, it means the fake God. Because that's what the Bible is ministering to you. The God kind of faith. God level of faith. Listening to me. Are you listening to me? But faith is not a religious concept. It's a spiritual force. And so you're designed to have faith for whatever you hear. If you keep hearing uh, negativity, you will develop faith for it. You're not listening. If you keep hearing sickness and disease, you will develop faith for sickness and disease. Are you still here? If, if you keep hearing that there's an economic downturn and a recession is coming and all the economists are saying now there's a recession coming then what you do is you start developing faith for the recession you start acting are you there and that's why it's important that you get the 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 information the news from the Word of God and so as I was meditating on this the Spirit of the Lord said to me this week he said son uh, my principles are designed to regulate your economic environment you didn't hear what I just said he, he said the principles of the word are designed to regulate your economic environment in other words there will be no climate change in my economy you, you understand that no matter what goes on in the world my economic climate is not gonna change you know why because by the Word of God and by the faith of God, I have been given the authority to manage it. Oh. No, 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 no. Are you still here? So I want you to look at Genesis chapter number 12. It's very interesting too. I'm going to say this because I was given a brief assignment. So I'm going to take about, uh, about 10 minutes or so uh, and I'll cut this out of the time uh, of the preaching. But I was given a brief assignment. Because I got several calls in the last couple of weeks about uh, about people who are concerned about uh, you know giving and tithing and, and those types of things and and I heard one of our dear brothers a man who I greatly respect and love was recorded as saying some things about tithing uh, in the body of Christ and um, and I know that man do you understand? And, and, and I know how people will take things out of context and twist them to bring confusion to the body of Christ. Now, I'm not addressing it because he said it. I'm addressing this because God told me to do it. I haven't heard what was said. Do you understand? And what I'm about to tell you, I have taught you many times before. So it's not a reaction to anything because, number one, I didn't hear it. Look at your neighbor and say, the bishop said he didn't hear it. I, I, I haven't heard it. I haven't gone to YouTube to try to find out what it is. I've had pastors calling me from other nations. You understand? So what about this? What about that? Well, first of all, I said, well, don't, don't trip because I know the man. You understand? And I know that he has been blessed and prospered from tithing and giving. I know that. But see, what happens when the Spirit of God begins to bring other dimensions of truth to restore things to the body of Christ, the problem is that people start hearing this or that instead of this and that. Did you hear what I just said? Uh, it, it, it's a historical reality if you follow the move of restoration in the church if you follow the Spirit of God restoring truth to the church it is always a pattern that uh, the the leaders of the last wave of restoration are always the greatest resistance to the new uh, uh, influence of, of, of restoration what you got to understand is the Spirit of God the Spirit of God is restoring truth to the church until we all come to the unity of the faith in other words until we're believing see that doesn't mean we all agree on our faith it means we all look to god's word 
for what the truth is. And the reality is, no matter who your favorite television preacher is, including Bishop McClendon, if what I say isn't in the Word, or if the Word of God is, it, 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 is alters what I teach, then the Word is right. Are you still here? And the problem with all of us who preach the gospel, Paul says this, we know in part, we prophesy in part. And as you walk with God, what should happen is your part should get bigger. The, the part you know should get larger. Wait a minute if you understand what I'm saying. So, 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 so this is important. And, and, and I've taught you this so many times that it's almost redundant for me to say so. But because there's all this stuff going on right now, and part of my responsibility as a prophet with a, in the body of Christ is to make sure that God's children are not tossed. See, this is, this is, what, this is, what, this is what the Ephesians 4.11 endowments are. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, the Bible says, for the perfecting, maturing of the saints. For the edifying, strengthening of Christ that the, that the people of God would be no more like children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine now I want to make sure it's clear what I'm saying I am not suggesting that what our brother my friend and the man of God has said is erroneous doctrine what I'm telling you is people are at different levels of hearing and understanding and so they take things out of context. So one of the one of the things here, and I've said this to you before, is that people I said, well, you know, tithing and giving, or as tithing specifically, is is not under the new covenant. It's not under, it's not in the new covenant. And there is this emphasis on the message of grace. And I was sharing this with our sons here. That see, the problem with what's happening with this right now is the message is not grace grace is not the message i know you're saying it but grace is not the message grace is the result of the message thank you for the seven of you that got that the rest of you as you think about it, see grace is not the message Grace is the result of the message. The message is the finished work of Jesus. The message is the work is finished. And the problem is, is if you try to, to take covenant truth and doctrine and, and pass through the message of grace, you will come into error because it will jam your mind. But if you pass it through the lens of that the work is finished then you will begin to understand how to apply these things in their proper place and order now why are you saying this Bishop because I've taught you this before and as, as see the tithe is one of the things that God has given you and I to help regulate our economic environment the tithe is a blessing principle it is not under the law and i've showed you this before but i'm going to take you to the word now there is a tithe before the law there is a tithe under the law there is a tithe after the law i'm going to say it again and again i'm going to show you from the words you don't have to take my my, my, my word for it there is a tithe before the law there is a tithe under the law. There is a tithe after the law. The word tithe, the Hebrew word is mahasra. It means the tenth. So watch this now. The, the portion is the same. The principle is the same. The premise changes. I'm going to say it again. The portion is the same. It's a tenth. The principle is the same. It's a blessing principle. But the premise is different. The premise before the law 
is different than the premise under the law and the premise after the law is different from the premise before the law and under the law. The premise, the reason why changes. But the portion doesn't change and the principle doesn't change. It's a blessing principle. The, uh, the Lord said it to me like this this week and I'm going to show you from the word. He said, son, when you learn the alphabet, A, B, Okay, so you know it. Okay, so, so when you learn the alphabet, and the Lord, the Lord said this to me, when you learn the alphabet, it is understood that the alphabet is the building blocks of reading and speaking and writing, right? So when you learn the alphabet, it is understood that once you learn the letters, when you speak to someone, you're not going to say H-E-L-L-O, H-O-W, a-R-Y-O-U. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to speak because I've learned the principles of speaking. So, 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 I'm, not, so I'm not going to spell out everything I'm, I say. I'm going to say it. Do you understand? See, the tithe is a basic building block of walking in the blessing of God. Once you get it down, you don't have to spell it out. It's so automatic. It's so fundamental that it's in all your giving. And the principle is you should be giving more than a tenth. But the tenth is where we all stop. You, you should be able to speak. But you got to know your ABCs first. Wave at me if you understand. Now, for those of you that would like to give me credit for that level of genius in explanation, the Spirit of God said that to me to help his people. I never thought of it before. Okay, so I just want you to understand. Okay, so let, 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 me, show you something. let, let me show you something about this. And I want, I want, I want you to see this. And the Lord told me to take a few minutes. Because what's going to happen is even though if you don't need this, there are about, uh, about 100,000 people who are going to watch this in the next 30 days. Pay attention. Chapter 12 says, Now the Lord, verse 1, had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Everybody say, God said he would bless me. Watch this. And make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families, paka in Hebrew, all those like you of the earth shall be blessed. Are you still here? Now, I want you to look at verse 2. He says, I will make you a good, I will bless will make you sing. So I want you to get this. The promise to Abram was not just that he would be blessed. The pr that's just half of, of it. It's that he would be no, no. Let's do it, that he would be first of all and that second of all he would be a do you see both? Okay. Now that's the promise. Do you see it's the promise? Now here's what I want you to see. The promise that God said I would bless you and make you a blessing precedes even the covenant. No, you no, you, you, you didn't get what I said. God has not yet made covenant with Abraham. He will make covenant with Abraham in Genesis 15. I'm going to show it to you. So he hasn't even, he hasn't even made covenant with Abraham yet. He is introducing himself as the blesser. <laughs> Woo! As the one who blesses. That, that Hebrew word, it, 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 one of those words, it's benedicteo, which it, it, benediction is what you give at the conclusion. 
See, the blesser is the one who announces conclusions before stuff happens. See, to walk in the blessing is to know the end before the war starts. No, you're not listening. And when you learn the blessing, so, so see, to walk in the blessing is to know I'm going to prosper no matter what happens. Why? Because God has already determined my conclusion. Walking in the blessing is no matter what the physician says, I'm going to live and not die. Because ah, the blessing is working. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm not preaching this. Uh, okay, so, so here's what I want you to see. He says, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. Is that what he says? Yeah. Now go to Genesis 14. In Genesis 14, verse 18, Abram meets uh, the kings after coming back from the slaughter, after he gets lots of stuff back. And here's what I want you to see. He meets Melchizedek, verse 18. Then Melchizedek, seeing of king of Salem brought out bread and wine he was the priest of the most high God and he blessed him that is he Melchizedek blessed him that is Abram said blessed be Abram of God most high possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand watch this and he that is Abram gave him that is Melchizedek high the Hebrew word is Mahasra, a tenth okay of all now why did he do it watch this now the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the purse and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, oh no, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will take nothing that is yours, lest you should say, I have made them rich. I want you to get this now. And I, I talked this to you before. That means that between Genesis 12 and Genesis 14, 18, there is some exchange between God and Abram that we don't get to see and we don't hear about why because Abram says I had a conversation with God the one who introduced himself to me as the blesser and the one who's gonna make me a blessing he and I had a conversation and in that conversation which is not recorded in Scripture I lifted my hand to this God and made an oath to him that whatever he said to me, I was going to do it. So clearly, between Genesis 12, where God introduces himself to Abram, Genesis 14, 18, where Abram ties, God and Abram have had a conversation on this issue of tithing. And Abram clearly expects don't miss this. He just met, he just met this God two chapters ago. Yeah. And Abram clearly expects that if he does this, he's going to be rich. No, you missed a good place to think. So clearly, this God has told Abram, you do this. You're going you, you go, you go, you to be rich, son. I'm going to prosper you. Now don't look at me in that tone of voice. I'm reading your Bible to you. Now here's what I want you to see. Genesis 12, they meet. Genesis 14, the principle of the tithe. Go to Genesis 15. After Abram tithes, God shows him all this. Now look at this, verse 18. Uh, well, it says, after these things. So it says, verse 18, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying to your descendants. So I want you to see this. The promise and the principle of tithing is before the covenant. No, it's a good place to say amen. So watch this. Even if the covenant is done away with, it doesn't affect the tithe because the tithe was before even the covenant. Now what? What? Go to Galatians 3. See, the word of God ends all discussion. It ends all argument. Galatians chapter 3. Are you still here? Verse number 18. I'm going to teach this. The Lord told me I'm going to have to take three days and teach this. 
I'm just giving you an hors d'oeuvre. But I'm giving you an hors d'oeuvre to settle an issue. Galatians chapter 3. Now look, whoo! Galatians chapter 3, verse number 3. No, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll read it, verse 15. I got to hurry. Galatians 3, verse 15. What? 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 Will you, will you read your Bible or watch? Because if you read this, you will need at least two people, a preacher and somebody else, to help you misunderstand this. Watch. Watch. Verse 15, brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one adds, or no one annuls it or adds to it. In other words, he said, even if it's a covenant just between men, once the covenant is settled, nobody can take away from it, and nobody can add to it. Now that's even if it's just a man's covenant. This is not a man's covenant. This is a covenant. This is a covenant between Jehovah, Abram, and Yeshua. Stay with me. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. In other words, once the covenant is settled, you can't change it. Now to Abram, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. The promises. So that promise that God makes to Abram in Genesis 12 is not made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's made to Abraham and Jesus. Watch it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Watch this. He does not say unto seeds, plural as of many, and to seed who is Christ. Now look at this. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul or change the terms or the principles of the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ that it should make the promise of no effect. So now watch this. I want you to pay attention to what this is because this is deep. Watch it. For if inheritance is of the law, it is no longer a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So watch this. What purpose then does the law serve? Watch this. It was added because of transgressions. So now watch this. The law is not even a part of the original covenant. No, you missed it. So, so, so watch this. So watch. You got the promise. Right? Then you've got the principle of the tithe, which is before the, the covenant. And then you've got the covenant. Then you've got the law that is added to the covenant 430 years later. But the principle and the promise were before the covenant and the law so the law being taken away doesn't change the principle he says the reason I, I the reason there is even a tithe under the law is because my people weren't doing it but they were still expecting me to bless them So I had to put it in the law, even though I didn't give it to Abram by law, we just had an agreement. Are you still here? Well, let me finish this. Let me finish this. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? So, so, so do you see that tithing is not under the law? I want you to get it. Tithing is not even under the first covenant. It's before them both. So, there's a tithe before it in Abraham. There's a tithe un 
under the law because the people weren't doing it. Now, the, the old covenant is fulfilled and the law has been taken away. But that doesn't affect the tithe because it was before the old covenant and the law. Are you still here? So let's, let's, let, let's, let's see what Jesus says. Is that all right? I say, is that all right? I said, is that all right? Now, now, now remember, remember, the promise was made to Abram and Jesus. So when, when Abram agreed to tithe, so did Yeshua. Because the promise was made to him according to Abram. Ain't nobody saying nothing to the prophet. Stay with me. Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weight of your matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done, meaning practice justice, mercy, and faith without leaving the others undone. So Jesus said you should not be tithe undone. Now, the difference is, he didn't, now you must do it. He said, now you ought to do it. Now, why? Why? And here's the key. Here, one other scripture, and here's the key. So, so watch it. The, the portion is the same. The principle is the same. Premise changes. Then five changes. Before the law, I'm tithing because it is the revelation of the Under the law, I'm tithing because now the curse is opting. Are you still here? Are they getting it? And has given me dominion over it. The curse is operating the earth on man. God never First man. So even under the law, you weren't tithing to get the curse off you. Because God didn't put it on you. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Or cursed is the ground in relation to you. In other words, the ground was ordained to respond to you. That's why Jesus spoke to wind and waves and trees and they obeyed him. Because creation was designed to respond to the voice of those with the blessing. The word curse in Hebrew means to have the disregard of. So when God says you're cursed, he's not saying I'm cursing you. He says the ground doesn't have to respond to you. It can disregard you. Are you there? I'm, I'm, I'm into something I'm not supposed to teach today. So let me, let, let, let me, let, let me finish this. Uh, uh, are you getting this? So, so, so Jesus says, you ought to know, what is the reason? Because the curse is operating on the ground. It's very interesting. The word ground is the Hebrew word Adama. Adam was named Adam because he was taken from the dust of the Adama. Now, God couldn't curse man because he had already blessed him. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And not even God will curse what God has blessed. But because the ground was not blessed, it was Adam's job to bless. And the curse started working before he could finish the job. So when Cain breaks the principle of 
giving to God his designated portion, which is a principle of the tithe. God says, okay, the curse is operating on the ground. And if you don't operate by my blessing principle, the curse that is operating on the ground can come on you because you are made from the dust of the ground and all of the ground will ultimately respond to my word. So I didn't curse you, but the curse that's operating, if you don't resist it with my blessing principle, can come up on you, which is why I've told you before, Tithing is also a principle of walking in divine health. It protects your Adama. I don't have time to finish this. I'm, 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 but, but, but I'm, why is this important? Because no matter what comes in the next several months, your economic climate, your health climate, your well-being climate is going to be divinely regulated. You tither, you giver, you. Don't you let anybody talk you out of the blessing principle of God. Are you still here? Watch this. Ah! Let me, let me, let me, let me show you something. And this is why the reason changes. Uh, now, I took a moment with this. God told me to. And I work for him, not you. And I took a moment with this so that you don't have to take my word. But you can go to chat and verbs. Just replay this, find it, write down the scriptures, study it out, and I promise you, the Holy Spirit will not be with what I just told you. It's his word. Now watch this. Look at Ephesians 1 verse 3. It's blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, watch this, who has does it sound like something that's going to be done or has been done? Has blessed us with every spirit. Everybody say spirit. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Somebody say in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places in Christ. Now watch this. Children, pay attention. This where the principle of premise changes. See, in the new covenant, I have already been blessed with a spiritual blessing. Now let me ask you this. Is money a spiritual blessing or a natural one? Ah. So I have the spiritual endowment. That's the power to get wealth. But in order for the money to come the creation has to respond to me see I've been blessed with spiritual blessings but I gotta work that in the earth it's not gonna work automatically that's why there are so many worshiping praying God loving broke Christians because they are spiritually blessed but they do not tithe and they do not give and the earth has the legal right to disregard their spiritual blessing. Watch it. You have been blessed with all. Wait a minute. In the. Look how specific it is. You have not been blessed in earthly places. No, you missed. You, you have not been. You have not been blessed in Christ in earthly places. You have been blessed in Christ spiritually and in the heavenly places. And you have to take that spiritual blessing that is in the heavens and work it in the earth by tithing, by sowing, and by declaring the word of God. Now, excuse me. This is why 
If someone tells you, you don't need to tithe to be blessed in the new covenant, they are correct. But that ain't the whole truth. It's part of the truth. I love what my, one of my spiritual papas, Dr. Mark Hanby, used to teach me. He would, say, he would say, son, you have to remember this. All truth, and I have several spiritual fathers. Pastor Chris is one, Dr. Hanby is another, uh, Brother Copeland is another. A and I have several. You, 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 know, you don't have many, but you may have more than one. If your gifting is multidimensional, you may have to have different fathers to help you with different aspects of your gifting. See, when you're a prophet, teacher, evangelist with an apostolic assignment, you may need some people who have those graces to help steward you. I don't have time to go into that either. But you don't have many. Okay, so, so, so watch this. So one of my spiritual fathers would, would tell me, he would say, son, all truth is held in tension. He said, it's like, it's like holding a rope. You got to pull both sides. And if you go too far to one side, you're in error. And if you go too far to the other side, you're in error. Even though it's the same rope, it's got to be held in tension. And if you stay in tension, you'll find the truth. That'll help you. So watch this. So, so watch this. So anyone who tells you in the new covenant, you don't have to be tithed. You don't have to tithe to be blessed. They are correct. And if you don't tithe, you're not cursed. They are correct. But the curse has access to your stuff. You're not cursed. But the curse has access to your stuff. And you have not done what it takes to make your spiritual heavenly blessing work in the earth. Are you there? Are you there? So watch this. And see, that's where you have to go all the way back to the promise. Because the tithe was not a covenant and it was not about the law. It was about the promise. And the promise was, not only will I bless you, which has already occurred for you in Christ Jesus. But the promise was, I will bless you, but then I'm going to make you uh, a blessing. And so here's what I tell you by the word of God and by the mind of the spirit. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, it is the most selfish thing you could possibly do to not be a tither. Because if you are a believer in Christ Jesus and you know what I just taught you and you don't tithe, here's what you were saying to God. I want to be blessed, but I'm not interested in helping you be a blessing in the earth. See, I don't want to just be blessed. That's only half of the covenant. I, I want to be blessed and I want to be a blessed thing. I want to be able to pay your car note off if God tells me. Give you a car if God tells me. I want to have enough houses that if God tells me to give you one, I can give you one without you having to pay anything. I want to be a blessing. And here's what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. He, he said, son, if you are not a tither, you're, you're blessed. Because you're blessed in all, with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But I need people in the earth who are interested in helping me take territory. In helping me get the gospel out. In helping me get the good news that they're enjoying to other people. No, in the new covenant, you don't tithe to be blessed. You're already blessed. You tithe to be a blessing and to be more and more and more 
of a blessing. Lay your hands upon yourself. This is what the enemy wants to stop. And I say it again, this is not a reaction or response to anything but the Spirit of God. I did not hear what all the controversy, I didn't hear it. And I'm going to say it again, I know the man that people are talking about, and I know he is a tither and a giver. I know that. Are you listening? Now, what has happened is, like all of us, and the Lord began to deal with me about this sometimes, I didn't, I, the Lord began to, he, he said, see, he said, son, the tithe is the minimum. It's like the ABCs. It's where you start. And just like once you learn how to write and read, you don't stop using your alphabet. You don't say, well, I'm a Pulitzer Prize winning author now. I think I'll stop using the alphabet. Ain't nobody going to understand anything you say or write from now on because you have departed from the foundation. You didn't understand that all your books were because you learned your ABCs. You didn't understand that you had to use A, B, C, D, E, F, G to write your Pulitzer Prize. When, okay, it's the same way in the kingdom. You don't stop tithing once you understand you're blessed. You now go on and keep increasing. Do you see this? Do you see this? Now let me ask you this, because I, I don't know by show of hands, how many of you even heard what I'm talking about as being addressed? How many of you? How many of you? How many of you know what, what I'm addressing? Because I haven't heard it. Let me see. You see this? I want you to look. I want you, if they could do this, this is 90% of, of, of the congregation here. So this is why the Spirit of God had me do this. And I want to make sure I say it again. I did not hear what has allegedly been said. And that man of God I know, I love, and this is not a reaction to him. One thing I have learned is when God is restoring truth to you, you have to be very mindful of how you articulate it. Because, and, and, and see, sometimes, and this is why many preachers don't even deal with these things, because we often don't have the time to break it down so fundamentally that everybody goes away with the right understanding. Jesus told me to do this today. And I thought I was going to preach too, but maybe not. <laughs> I said, you already did, Reverend. Do you understand? Yes. Did you get it? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm, my responsibility is to say what the word says. And I'm going to say this. I, I don't know. I'm going to say this. I don't. I, I got two or three calls this week. I don't know all that is happening to me. I am I am being given a greater responsibility for Christ's body in the earth I don't know why but I am being kept 
awake. I don't know why I'm being asked to speak into things that really don't concern me. I'm straight. I'm good. Love everybody. Know what the Spirit of God is saying to me. I have an agenda. I do know this. That as truth is restored to the body of Christ, the scripture says that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now there are other gifts, Evander's pastor, teacher, but it doesn't say the church is built on the foundation of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It says the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Which means that as every generation and era comes, there are foundations that have to be laid for that new era. There are things that have to be restored to the body of Christ in every era. And what the Holy Spirit is doing is restoring. So <laughs> there are apostles and prophets that are being identified for this era. And we have to lay foundations and make sure the church understands. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. And see, part of the prophet's responsibility is to root out, to pull down, as well as to plant. That's what God said to Jeremiah. He said, I I I've ordained you a prophet to the nations to root out as well as to build and to plant. So there are times, and this much I know, there are times when things are happening in the wind, in the spirit, that are affecting God's people. And he will start to talk to his apostles and prophets and say, address this. Speak to that. Make sure you... So, I believe that's a part of what I'm being given to do. But, but I, I will not get at odds with anybody. And, and when you hear somebody say something about something they heard, somebody else heard a preacher say, don't you start putting your mouth on men and women of God who have been verified and approved by God. Come on, say amen to this. Because I'm not calling any names, but that man is an apostle of God. And, and, and don't put your mouth on it. We all see in part, we all prophesy in part. And that's why I believe God puts apostles and prophets together. Are you still here? Lay your hands upon yourself. Man! I had something to preach. Lay your hands upon yourself. But God is concerned about his people. And the, and the enemy wants to do anything he can now to sow discord and division and to stop the prosperity of the church as it comes back together, as it starts to regather, as it starts to build momentum in a new era. The enemy wants to stop it. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, he will not stop the unity of the body of Christ he will not stop the principles of the blessing of God. We will walk in them. We will know them. We will understand them. We will do them. And we shall prosper. Coming in and going out. We shall prosper on the right hand and on the left. We shall advance and take territory. 
and you won't shut us down and you won't stop us and you won't divide us and you won't get us to shut up. Somebody shout under God. division. I cast out the spirit of error. I rebuke that lying devil out of the body of Christ. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Shut that out of Somebody in the spirit. Somebody pray in the spirit. coming to the unity of the faith, to the strengthening of the body of Christ, to a perfect, mature man, not tossed about with every wind and dust. No, 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 no. Not in this era. Woo! <laughs> the finish is on. Grab somebody by the hand and say, the finish is all. The finish is all. The enemy will do anything he can. He will not stop this move. Uh-uh. Slap somebody high five and say, we're back. We're back. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, we are. I feel the Holy Ghost. Excuse me. Woo! You have to excuse me. Follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. I had a message prepared. But last night, about three in the morning, I got about three hours of sleep. And God said, you deal with this. He told me just to do it at the offering. I thought that's all it would be. Grab some yeah, grab somebody by the hand if you trust them and say in the name of Jesus you are not only blessed whew, you are going to be more of a blessing Woo. yes I see it See, this is houses being bought. This is apartment buildings being owned by the state. This is businesses being birthed. Ain't nobody say it. I see it. Oh. I see it. I see it. Woo! This is somebody being able to write a million dollar check for the gospel. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. If you're one of those that you know is supposed to be more of a blessing, I want you to get out in the aisle and dance a minute. Woo! Hey, hey. hey. Woo! Showers of blessing. I see in the spirit showers of blessing coming on the saints yeah hey
I want to I'm going I'm to I'm close. Lay your hands upon yourself. I just, I saw two things just now. And I'm going to close quickly. See, I, I, I saw why the Lord had me do this. See, this is houses being bought. This is properties being taken. For the kingdom of God this is your house and your car being paid off I, I feel the Holy Ghost this is <laughs> this is you having everything you need settled and something left over so you can be more of a blessing because God is not running out of grace. He's not running out of mercy. He's not running out of love. But he's running out of time. And we got to get this gospel everywhere. This one. This one. This, this, this gospel of the finished work. This new bowl. This new covenant understanding. Lay your hands upon yourself. I'm going to say it one more time. And God is telling me to say, see, I, I know, and I haven't called any names, but I know the man that's being talked about. I know that man loves God, and he loves God's people. And I know this, I know this, because we've talked about it. See, when you begin to see what God is showing us, and you become free from religion, and commandments, and dogmas, you want people to be free. And so you want them to know, no, 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 you, 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 you're not, you don't have to tithe, it's not, no, you don't have, you, you don't have to be tithe to be blessed, you're already blessed, but, but, get the, get the rest of it, don't just get the, the I'm blessed, get the, be a blessing part, and sometimes, because I've done it, sometimes, sometimes, I'm talking about Clarence now, I'm not talking about anybody else, sometimes I've gotten something from God, and I've run with it and said it, I'm talking about me, before I had fully processed it. And then I, I, I confused people instead of helped them. And that's why the Lord told me, and some of you have heard me say things like that, because I made errors like that. I'm not saying an error was made. I'm talking about Clarence now. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about Clarence. And that's why the Lord has taught me there are some things, and you'll hear me say, you know, I've been carrying this for six months. Or, or God spoke this word to me just like what I'm preaching right now in the series God spoke it to me in November but he wouldn't let me preach it because the, the rough edges had to be smoothed out and th there are times when I've when I've when I've gotten stuff and I've been ready to preach it and the Lord would say no 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 not yet and and then he would show me now you can't say this like that because if you say this like that, you'll confuse my people. You have to say it like this. Are you listening? It is an awesome responsibility to feed God's people. Awesome. And none of us will ever do it flawlessly. But God will help us to help his people. Wait a minute if you understand what I just said. The Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for what you have done today. It was not my expectation, but I see your hand at work now. I decree the blessing rest upon every person who will hear these words and respond to them I pray my father that you would take your sons and daughters further into truth than I have been able to take them let them search the scriptures themselves 
and perhaps see even more than I have been able to reveal. But this, my Father, I know. I said what you told me. And I believe that you have helped me to rightly divide the work. Now, in the name of Jesus, can I get my intercessors praying? If you pray in the Holy Ghost, now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray and I speak peace of the Lord Jesus I speak peace to pastors and evangelists and teachers I decree in the name of Jesus more grace on your apostles and prophets that we might rightly steward the truths that you're restoring and edify your church to the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ we shall be your anointed body in earth I thank you for your mercy and your grace that you help us when we're strong you correct us when we err you enlighten us when we cannot see and so I declare now in the name of Jesus that I and your people have eyes to see what natural eyes cannot see we have ears to hear what natural ears cannot hear and what is not even entered into the hearts of other men and women is being revealed to your sons and daughters by the Spirit of God and we shall prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper in the name of Jesus yeah 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 just lift your hands and worship right there lift your hands and worship right there lift your hands and worship right there lift your hands and worship lift your hands and worship yeah lift your hands and worship lift your hands and worship yeah 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 yes 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 sing it one time we come on said we on holy ground there is angelic ministry going on here and Everybody, let us pray. Jesus now, Jesus now. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. Take me up one time. Lift your. Say we are. Thank you for your presence. On holy ground, yes, God. And I know that our angels ministry, spirit, minister strength, helping us get our inheritance. Let us pray, Jesus now. Lay your hands upon yourself. Say again, I had a message prepared. I was going to move into the furtherance of what we've been teaching, but the Lord told me to do this. And again, um, you know, he didn't trick me. He just told me what to do. But you know, in my mind, I thought, okay, well, this is for the offering and then then we'll get to the word surprise 
I am never really surprised but often amazed by what God does lay your hands up on yourself he is amazing and I pray that you have been ministered to by his word you got your hands on yourself now I'm going to assist you in worshiping God in giving which is what I really set out to do and if you are not or have not been a tither you should start today some of you will remember there were years where I would teach on tithing every year I had a mandate from God to do it and for about 10 years I would take 6 or 8 weeks each on tithing every single year during that time, God gave me revelation and insight. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. There is an endowment on my life to teach this. Because I've been a student of it for over 20 years. And through the progressive revelation of the Spirit, the Lord has taken me through it to, uh, to the point where I have an understanding of it in the new covenant. Didn't always have that understanding. How many of you understand what I just said? So, and God made a covenant with me years ago about, and he told me, whenever you teach on the tithe, when he told me to do this, some of you will remember, he made a covenant with me, he said, whenever you teach on the tithing, on tithing, he said, you tell people who haven't tithed to do it for 90 days. God made this covenant, I'll never forget it. When he told me, I want you to teach on it every year, he said, you tell people who haven't been tithers to do it for 90 days and he says and this is the covenant i'm making with you concerning anyone who responds to your teaching on time he said within 90 days if they do it consistently he said i will show them such a demonstrative thing in their financial and economic well-being that after 90 days they'll never stop tithing he said, he said i will do something for them so demonstrative something will get paid off something supernatural will happen somebody will break through and do something for them he said and, I, and I'll let them know it's because they tithe he said this is the covenant I made with you and to be honest with you he had to say it to me because when I started teaching on tithing back 20 years ago ain't wasn't nobody teaching on tithing ever now. and if you talked about tithing folk left your church but I would teach on it and people would come and be blessed so if you haven't tithed, what is, again, it's the tenth. A tenth of everything that comes into my hands I, belongs to God. It, it, it belongs to Him. I bring it to Him. But in the new covenant, not as a debt I owe, I bring it to Him as a seed. Because I've already been blessed. Whew, but I'm more of a blessing. See, your attitude changes. When you know you're blessed, I'm, I'm not doing it to get to, oh no, I'm doing it because I got something. And I'm increasing more and more. Wave at me if you understand. And if you don't want to tithe, you, you don't, don't do it. I ain't no form forcing you. I'm going to be good. And this church is going to be fine. If, if nobody in here tithe, God would send me millions from someplace else to get his work done. You know why? Because I'm going to be here doing it. Lay your hands upon yourself. Here's what I want you to do. If you're a tither, you know what to do. A tenth of everything that comes into my hands and yours belong to God. I remember Pastor Nick, before I understood anything about this, I would go into my daddy's office when I was seven, eight years old. And before he would go down to preach, I would watch him write his tithe check. And the Lord told me when I started preaching, he said, you're blessed because your daddy tithed. I'll explain that when I, when I teach. He, he, told, he told me. There are certain things you have because your father tithed and his life wasn't long enough for me to give them to him. I had to give some of it to you. When, before the end of the year, I'm going to take three days and teach in this area in a prophetic encounter. Don't miss it. The Lord told me to do that this morning. So watch this. If you're a tither, you know what to do. 
If you're sowing some other way, first fruit, prophet seed, some other way, this is the time to do it. We're going to worship God. I want you to get that seed. Whatever it is you had decided to sow. If you're a tither, you know what that is. It's a tenth, a mahasra. A penny out of every dime, a dime out of every dollar. Ten out of every hundred, a hundred out of every thousand. Ten thousand out of every hundred thousand. Hundred thousand out of every million. Yibosha belongs to God. And you bring it to him with joy and expectation. Come on, say amen to this. See, and here's the thing. If you won't give God $10 out of a hundred, you won't give him a hundred thousand out of a million. You won't do it. Because the principle is, if you're unfaithful in little, the same unfaithful person in much. But if you are faithful in little, it's a wonderful thing, uh, Mike. When God says in the prophet Malachi, when he says, prove me concerning the tithe. It's one of the only places God says, try me out. Everything else is in his word. He says, do it, do it, do it. Not a discussion, not an option. But with tithing, he says, try me out. <laughs> and, if you, and if you study that word, Pastor Ruth, you'll know this in the original Hebrew language. The word proved there, it, it's an interesting Hebrew word. It carries with it the connotation of rising to any altitude and viewing it from there. <laughs> in other words, he says, it'll look the same when you give a dime out of a dollar <laughs> as when you give a hundred thousand out of a million. The same thing will happen. It'll just happen on a larger scale. <laughs> Your vision will expand. Isn't that good? Oh, I love God's word. Now here's what I want you to do. And this is the instruction I just got from the Lord. I want whatever you just gave, whatever you just decided to give, whatever that was, look at your neighbor and say, you know what it was. I want you to add $120 to it if you can. Because something just got started in your economic life. And 120 is the number where things start in the Holy Ghost. It was 120 people on the day of Pentecost. If you can't do that, then I want you to add a seed of 70 to it, an impartation seed. And if you can't do any of them, don't do nothing. No force. I just heard this in my spirit. Yes, sir, I'll do that. And the Lord just told me to give more than all of that just now, <laughs> just in that moment with my tithe. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But it's more than both the things I said combined. And then some. I am responsible for this. If you're watching me live streaming, I want you to do the very same thing. Right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a donate button. I want you to sow. The word of God has come to you. Or you can text CEMM to 41444. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. You can text C E four one four four four. Just follow the bus. There's a number on the screen three one zero three two three twenty six hundred. Yes, sir. Three one zero three two three twenty six hundred. I want you to call the number on the screen. There are some of you that listened to me for the last whatever it was hour. I don't know how long I was talking. You listened to me, and faith rose up in your heart. There's some economic things that you're dealing with. And God is wanting you to break through. You need to do what he's directing you to do. Call my prayer minister right now. Let us for you. Let us agree with you. So whatever God is leading you to sow, start now. Start where you are. If you have a tither, please hear me. You don't have to make up for years of not tithing. Don't try to catch up. Just start now. A lot of people live under condemnation. Well, him and tithe. No, 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 no. All that is the blood has taken care of that. Okay, so you don't have, and you know, when you miss tithing, you don't have to go try to make it up. Just, just do it. Are you there? 
Are you there? So 310-323-2600. So as God has directed you. Let us pray for you. If you've got the Bishop McClendon app, it's an easy way to sow. If you don't have it, you can download it from Google or iTunes, or you can give live. We'd love to see you live. So come and join us and sow into this anointing. Those of you that are here in the tabernacle, if you're making out a check, make it payable to CEMM, Clarence E. McClendon Ministries. There are already people in the aisles. If you want to give on a bank or credit card, you can get into the aisle and give that way. There are people there ready to assist you. If the Spirit of God is leading you, thank you, Lord. If the Spirit of God is leading you to sow, you need to do it. There are people watching me right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you to sow. There's somebody, the Holy Spirit spoke to you to sow a $1,000 seed. You're watching me. Uh, you're a pastor. You're watching me. And the Spirit of God is doing something in you, connecting you to this anointing right now. And something supernatural is going to happen in your ministry as you act on the Word of God. It's already been released. There are other people here God is leading to give in certain dimensions. If the Spirit of God spoke something to you, you need to do it. This is an unusual anointing here as we're following the leading of the Spirit. Do what God has said. I'm going to pray and we are going to worship with our giving. Lift your hands up and repeat after me. Say, this is not a stick up. That's not why I have my hands up. This is the way up. This is how the new creation increases by worshiping God with our substance, with our hands, with our mouths. Therefore, I declare I am blessed and I am a blessing. I am increasing more and more. On the right hand and the left, I am expanding, taking territory by the Spirit of God. And I boldly confess in favor, in finance, in things being added to me. All this week, all three of those are happening for me in Jesus' name. I don't know who I'm talking to, but lean over to somebody and tell them, you're going to get something this week that you didn't have to pay for that you didn't have to work for and that you didn't steal somebody's gonna favor you in jesus name bless bless me bless me oh lord bless me indeed enlarge my territory Somebody say, bless me, Jesus. Bless me, oh Lord. Bless me indeed. Come on, lift your hands and say, increase, increase me on the right hand and the left. while you worship increase me Jesus oh Lord enlarge my territory oh God I see it oh Lord bless me oh Lord bless me oh
follow with it. Put your hands together and thank God for your come on, thank Him for it. In the name of Jesus, did you receive from God's word today? Were you ministered to? Will you thank God for his word? Come on, thank you. Before I minister communion and we're going to make our way, uh, I need to pray the blessing over two very, very faithful people who have served me and this ministry by the will of God. Paul said, he said, first they gave themselves to God and then to us by the will of God who have served us and they are relocating um, to another state and we will be very, very uh, sorry to see them go because they have been faithful to God and to us in their ministry assignment. And I just have to say that I always felt a little safer <laughs> move this I always felt a little safer when Big D was near a brother you understand it was it uh, Dion and Anna Patrick uh, move this gentlemen please uh, have served um, Dion has served me in what we call our mantle men and security these are men who help us steward they're always there helping us advancing us places we go making sure that things are secure and you know, uh, ain't nobody trying to hurt a brother. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus said, watch as well as pray. <laughs> I, and he watched. And, uh, and, uh, and Anna served uh, Lady Priscilla as one of her adjutants and helped her come and go and move and certain things. And so they told us um, a few months ago, uh, that they were going to be relocating and of course I received it and then I prayed against it no I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't I did I did I did not do that but uh, when they told me that it was delayed I was thankful <laughs> and then when they told me again well I'm not sure when it's gonna be I was even more thankful and uh, then they told me that they were relocating but it's a blessing because God is increasing them and giving them some things and uh, and they are certainly connected and shall be connected they are sons and daughters of this vision so I'm going to ask you all to come uh, Dion and Anna Patrick would you thank God for them they're relocating they got house and stuff just come here and stand of course y'all probably can't see me now that Dion <laughs> is overshadowing me <laughs> this is what this is what it means to be overshadowed if you need a revelation of being overshadowed it, it, okay um so i want you to stretch your hands in this direction and it, how many of you know the patrick tell of you know them. you know they're faithful and so i'm going to release them uh as a c and nice and mike said nice Faithful and nice is better than just faithful. Amen. And, and, and we thank God for them. So I want you to stretch your hands towards them and, and pray in the spirit for them. I want you and you to know how much I love and appreciate you. And, and on behalf of Lady Priscilla, who's handling some things with Seth today, I want to make sure you know the love and appreciation that we have for you both how you have stewarded the grace of God on your lives and helped us. We are uh, eternally grateful. And um, Anna, sometimes you'd come to the house and help around there and, you know, do things. And I so appreciate your faithfulness. Uh, you are special to God and you are special to me. And I know the blessing of the Lord has already gone before you. So what I'm doing here is I'm releasing you as a seed wherever you go you're going to prosper but you stay connected this anointing will remain
upon you and with you. And wherever God sends you, I know whoever receives you is going to receive a blessing. Stretch your hands in this direction. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this man and for this woman of God. They belong to you. You have granted us stewardship as under shepherds for a season in watching for their souls. And we pray that we have honored you in feeding them the word and ministering your grace to them. But now, Lord, I remind you of your word. For you said you would send an angel before us to keep us in the way and to bring us into the places that you have prepared. And so I declare for this man and woman, there are prepared places that are already set to receive them. You said the steps of the good man and woman are ordered of the Lord. You direct their steps. So I thank you that from this moment to the moment of their establishment and settling, that their every step is ordered that you have gone before them we declare in the name of Jesus peace and prosperity shall be their portion and Satan we remind you that this man and woman are under the covering of the great God Jehovah and we release them and we commend them my father to you and to the word of grace which is able to keep them and Continually give them the inheritance that is theirs among those who are sanctified. Now in the name of Jesus, I bless and I send forth. In the name of Jesus, I bless, I release, and I send forth. Ha! <laughs> I see. E la bora ushata ma. Vantili borra kasista, manto rabasata shtokobosata. A season, says the Lord, a season, a season of prosperity and grace and increase shall be your portion. And yes, I've heard your prayers and honored your requests, and there shall be a reordering, and there shall be no separation. You shall lack nothing spiritually or naturally. A season, says the Lord, a season. And I will give you the desires of your heart. For you have already asked me, says the Spirit, Lord, what about this and that? And the Lord said, yes, I will grant it. I will grant it. Watch what I will do, says the Lord. For there is a part that you know but I have good surprises in store. <laughs> Woo! Good surprises in store, says the Spirit of Grace. In the name of Jesus. And the people said, Would you clap your hands and bless the Lord? God bless you. We love you. Come on, thank God for the Patricks. We'll see you again. Now I just I just I just saw some things while I was praying for you. I just saw some things while I was praying for you. Good things. I'm gonna share them with you. I saw something. I'm not being allowed to speak it, but I'll, I know what's gonna happen. I'll tell you so when it happens, y'all can y'all can testify that it's already settled amen clap your hands and praise the Lord for it we're going to minister communion to you very quickly so if you'll take the bread in your hand and the cup we're going to bless it remember that the bread and the cup is not just a sacrament or an ordinance according to the revelation of the word and the spirit of God it is the wisdom of God for the new creation and a weapon in the hand of the new creation.
And so I want you to lift up the bread and remember, Paul said, the bread which we bless, the cup which we bless. If you're at home, if you don't have crackers and juice, get Wonder Bread and Kool-Aid. We'll bless it. And once we bless it, the same blessing will rest upon it. In Jesus' name, we speak the blessing upon these instruments. And we declare that from this moment, they are used for the purposes that your word has ordained and every blessing and attribute and favor flows to your people in Jesus name remember what Jesus declared this is my body given for you and when we take the bread we are receiving that body that took our sin our sickness poverty and lack that we in exchange might have the gift of righteousness divine health and increasing prosperity and abundance more and more. This is the gospel and the finished work of Jesus has assured us of it. I want you to say these words out loud. Say, Lord, I receive your body, the one that took my sin, my sickness, my lack. And I boldly confess the debt is paid in full and I am by the word of God free in Jesus name let's all eat together then the scripture says after that Jesus took the cup and he said this cup is the new somebody say the new only in relation to the cup does he speak of the new the bread is the finish of the old and when we drink from the cup we receive the new again the scripture teaches that the body that was sown was not the same one that was resurrected first Corinthians 15 35 through 45 tells us this one Jesus but two different bodies it was sown one way and raised another way it was sown in dishonor it was raised in glory it was sown in corruption it was raised in corruption it was sown a natural body it was raised the Bible says a spiritual body we drink from the cup we are receiving every benefit of the resurrected Jesus say out loud say Lord I receive every benefit of the finished work my sins are remitted and I boldly confess, I am being transformed into the image of your son every single day. I do this not by my performance, but by beholding the finished work. And I am transformed into that image by the spirit of the Lord. This is the word. I receive it. Let's all drink together. And the people said, Amen and Amen. If you have never accepted Christ Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, whether you are here in the tabernacle or there, I want every person under the sound of my voice right now just to lift your hands before the Lord and say these words out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive your finished work you are the reconciler come on say it with strength you are the reconciler you are the one who has made me one again with God I declare my sins are remitted and your resurrection is my receipt it is my evidence that I am accepted and your sacrifice Lord Jesus accepted on my behalf I am a child of God I'm saved if you prayed that prayer the work is already done the Bible declares that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life if you prayed it here or you prayed it there before you go to bed tonight I want you to go to bishopmcclendon.com let me know you prayed the prayer that reconciles the soul to God and I want to help you continue walking in newness of life you new creation you clap your hands and bless the Lord everybody the Father in Jesus name 
We pray a hedge of protection in the north, the south, the east, and west around this people, their household, their families, their goods, and all they have on every side. We declare that everything in their hands prospers and they increase more and more in the land that you have given to them. And so we boldly declare now the angels of the Lord encamp round about us and they deliver us because we are those that fear the Lord. And the people said, the Lord bless you. Bye-bye. We'll see you by his grace at the place of grace.